Always so welcome back to the yeah, current show. Look who's here. Happy to have a good friend of the show, uh, Rob Manfred, the commissioner of Major League Baseball. Rob, good to see you. Thanks for coming Great by. Great to see you, as always. Yes, 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 for sure. Uh, before we get into a lot of the nitty-gritty with baseball, uh, you guys opened up in Seoul, Korea uh, with two games, and then, of course, uh, the rest of the world got to enjoy you know, the more official opening day about right. a week and a half ago. Just give us a sense of where we're at as we start the 2024 season coming off what I thought was a great year last year with the rule changes, the game being sped up, and baseball seemed to be a real healthy spot when we last saw you. Yeah, well, we feel like uh, we're off to a great start. Uh, Seoul was really interesting. Um, you know, the, the atmosphere in the stadium's great. You know, the fans actually sing songs for each individual player. It's oh, really wow. an exciting atmosphere. Um, and, you know, they have a baseball culture um, back at home. Um, we're excited. You know, again, we got another wave of young guys yep. who are mm. driving the game. And it's just a really important thing for us. Um, you know, a lot of off-season excitement, obviously, with Otani moving to the Dodgers, um, generated a lot of news. And, you know, the early returns, at least the game on the field, it's looks good. like it should look. All right, so you brought up Otani. Obviously, you know, the one thing that keeps commissioners awake at night is uh, the integrity of the game being called into question. And with the, the proliferation of legalized gambling, I know that's your biggest concern. It's Gary Bettman's biggest concern, Adam Silver, and right. Roger Goodell. So we all know the story now revolves Otani on the interpreter. I know the DOI, the Department of Investigating for you guys, are now conducting a parallel investigation to whatever the feds are doing. Right. Uh, just walk me through where we're at in the moment, respecting the fact that you not, you have nothing to tell us in regards to the investigation, but where are we in terms of your investigation into what did and didn't happen? Well, you, you know, I thought, um, you know, Otani's public appearance, he's really credible, really transparent. Um, but I think it's incumbent upon us just to make sure that we can verify the story that's there. Again, to give our fans um, absolute assurance about the integrity of the game. Um, the investigation's moving along. It's hard to characterize, you know, hard to characterize sure. exactly how far along you are. But I, I don't think this is going to be long. I think it can be relatively short. And, um, you know, the fact that there is a parallel federal investigation, I think, in this particular case, may actually help us. It. Sometimes sure. it limits what you can do. Sometimes it can be an assist, and we're hoping it's going to be the last. Yeah, I, I tell people all the time, because you know, based on my background, being a compulsive gambler and, and my story playing out so publicly, you know, people have come to me to walk them through that world, right? Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, Otani's not under federal investigation. The collective bargaining agreement allows your players to wager on every sport not Right. called baseball, much like the other players are allowed to as well. So it's not as to whether or not Otani did or didn't make a wager in a college basketball game. The only thing we care about, and the only thing at the end of the day is important is, was he wagering on baseball or was he helping somebody wager on baseball? And if the answer is no to that, then you still have the discretion of finding him if you wanted to, you know, for you know, doing things that might be untoward for the game. But he's not getting suspended and he's not going to prison. Yeah, I, look, I think, I mean, the rules are this. Um, you know, players are allowed to bet um, with legal betting operations on sports other than baseball. Right. Once you're outside the realm of baseball, you know, it's kind of a different level of problem. It is, however, a violation of our rules to bet with a bookmaker as opposed to... An illegal to bookmaker. With, yeah, Correct. an illegal bookmaker as opposed to... But legal. still, your discretion what the penalty it, would be. It's a very different kind of level of penalty, historically has Got been it. at least, yeah. All right, let's get into some good stuff. Uh, everyone's thrilled, of course, that uh, all of our favorite teams here, the New York Yankees, are off to a, a six and one... Yeah! <laughs> a six and one start. Um, people, claim, people claim the NFL is scripted, but who on your staff wrote this script uh, for <laughs> the Yankees to win so many games like it, the last that bad, extra innings, to have Soto throw a guy out at the plate, sweep the Astros, because that guy needs a raise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, they're, they're off to a great start. Um, it, you know, look, we, we, we want um, – we're neutral, you know, but it, it, it's hard to deny that – um, you know, when our iconic franchises, not just the Yankees, the Yankees, the Dodgers, a bunch of franchises, when they're good, it's good for the sure. game. You know, it is good for the game, and, you know, it, it's nice to see them get off to yeah, it. One of the other things that's really good for the game, uh, you guys, along with Fox, are honoring the legacy of the game. Uh, and you're doing that by honoring uh, the Negro Leagues. And one of the big uh, initiatives this summer coming up uh, in Major League Baseball, a game that 
will be broadcast on Fox is the Rickwood Field game. Uh, for those of you that are not historians of baseball, Rickwood Field is a field in Birmingham, Alabama. It was the site of, I'm pretty sure, Willie Mays' last Negro League World Series appearance back in 1948. Uh, in which uh, his team back then, the Birmingham Barons, lost in five games to the Homestead Grays. But you're honestly the legacy of those African-American players who weren't allowed to play in MLB back in the day. Walk me through uh, the decision to do that and how excited you guys are to honor those folks. Well, let, let me put in a plug for your employee. You know, one of the great things about our relationship with Fox is they have been great partners in terms of developing and broadcasting these special event games that, that we've done in terms of Field of Dreams and right. Rickwood being another one. But, um, you know, we, we love the idea of taking baseball to places where we don't play day in and sure. day out. Um, you know, it gives a variety to the season, makes that particular game special. And w what we have found is if you have a theme, um, those special games are even more special. You know, worked great with Field of Dreams. And we think the idea of this game, um, the history of the Negro Leagues, its location in the United States, kind of in that football sure. belt, we like that idea, to tell you the truth. Um, and, you know, of course, the, the connection with Willie Mays is going to make it a great event. And Willie's still alive. Uh, I'm sure there's hope that Willie's going to be healthy enough to make it to that game, yeah, which would be great. That's an open question. You know, right. he, he, you know, he's up there in terms of years. But, um, you know, whether he's actually there or not, um, I think you will see that um, there will be sort of a special uh, As there moments be. for Willie in, in the game in Rickwood. No, you said Willie's still alive. I was just letting you know I'm yeah. right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you talked about the product on the field being up to your par. You're happy yeah. with it. Uh, I love the pitch clock. I agree with you. Are there new things coming down the pipeline, pipeline for the game? I think the, the, you know, the next thing that we are working on is the automated strike zone. Right. We, we have um, put a lot of time and money into the development of the system. The technology Absolutely awesome. It is actually accurate to one one hundredth of an inch. Mm. It wow. will call whatever geometry of a strike zone you tell it. You can tell it to call an oval. You can tell it to call a rectangle. You tell it to are call whatever. Are we calling the technology the Angel Hernandez technology? <laughs> <laughs> or are we not? Is that the unofficial name of it? I'm a it? hard no comment on that. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just want that. Did, did we get that? Okay. <laughs> I figured you're retiring soon. I guess I get the check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get the check. Right. So Mr. <laughs> not that soon. <laughs> uh, Mr. Commissioner, on June 8th on Fox, there's going to be a Super Saturday, which is going to involve two MLB games in London. The be the Phillies beating the Mets and then later on in the evening we have two iconic teams that you've already mentioned the Yankees and the Dodgers we look at that as a World Series preview per se right what does it mean to have those two teams facing off on such a big day well look it's one of the uh, benefits of the more balanced schedule that we went to a couple of years ago um, we want baseball to be a national product um, and in order to, to have that kind of national following, t fans in all the cities need to see all the teams on a more regular basis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it does give you a variety of opponents that we think, you know, we, we had a great attendance year last year. We were up over 70 million. We think part of that, in addition to the things you've mentioned already with respect to the, the play of the game on the field, variety of opponents is good for fans. Uh, right. They see different teams. Sure. It's a great thing. And, you know, we, we think the combination of um, – um, the London game, which will be another great atmosphere in some place that we don't ordinarily play, and then a matchup like that in the evening is great for us. Is and there any truth that the owner of the New York Mets, Steve Cohen, came to you guys and begged you to let the Mets play during the solar eclipse <laughs> so that Mets fans wouldn't see the product on the field? Or is that something I may have just made up? You know, I, that, can I tell you something? It's interesting you say that. There was actually conversation about games during, actually during the eclipse. Right, the Yankees oh. originally were going to play at yeah, 2 o'clock, yeah, yeah. and the eclipse is set for like a, a couple minutes later. Uh, yeah, it's not I, happening. I, I sort of thought not playing during the eclipse was a good plan. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A good, probably a good idea. Good night, I want to show you know one of the things I think there are times not you in particular, but you know sometimes it'd be easy for a commissioner to lose sight of the plight of the average fan, right? Because you're you're sitting in in your office dealing with really important stuff for the game, and sometimes it's easy just not to understand the fan experience. So I just want to show you a video of a fan last night to show you how much baseball does mean to people, even when the team's off to a oh, tough yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's a Mets yeah. fan, Rob. That's, that was the guy 
the one guy, it was pick your own section day at City Field yesterday. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. he's being rough on the Mets. I mean, <laughs> really rough on the Mets. <laughs> that's the guy. That's the guy right there. I, I teased you about retiring. You did announce before the season began that uh, five more years mm -hmm. uh, you'll be commissioner. And then your thought was now, obviously you could theoretically change your, your mind five years to so know that five years would be a good run for you and that you would step down as commissioner. And I'm wondering, for a guy that loves the sport of baseball and has loved being commissioner, uh, as I've gotten to know you personally away from all this, uh, why walk away in five years? Well, look, I, I, I'm a believer that great institutions periodically need new leadership. You know, you, you have a run. Mine will be 14 or 15 years. I had some things, still have some things I'd like to accomplish before I'm done. But, you know, I do believe that every period of time, a great institution like ours should have a new vision, let somebody else come and put their imprimatur on the game. Which is really counterintuitive to most commissioners. Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure I'm exactly like all of my predecessors <laughs> right. in that regard. You know, this, the second thing, um, I think it's important um, that the owners were aware as to what my plans were, sure. what my thinking is. You know, it, the business has gotten really, really complicated. Um, it's a funny combination of, you know, governance dealing with the 30 clubs and, you know, real straight business issues. How are you going to monetize your content? Those sorts of questions. And I, I, I think you need some time to think through who should be next, groom that person, and, and get the sport in the best position to be successful you, you, over the long haul. If you take out the national broadcast deal that you have currently with Fox right. and in the playoffs with a couple of networks, do you foresee a day, maybe not during your tenure, but as we move closer and closer to technology, really changing the way all of us live our lives, even more so than it has, where baseball could ever find itself kind of in an a la carte type scenario Where's the fan? Oh, it's going to cost me 99 cents. I watched today's Yankees Red Sox game, or you know, a big, you know, that type of thing. You think that's the future? Well, let me say two things. Um, I do think broadcast television, particularly for big events, the reach of it is always going to be, at least for the foreseeable sure. future, going to be part of the little landscape for us. I do um, think because of the everyday nature of our sport. Um, it would be great for our game if we could get to a frictionless experience for the fan where they can go in, get rid of the blackouts, buy, you want to buy one game today, you want to buy an outer market package, you want to buy your team for the season. I think that, you know, a digital product that allowed um, fans to do that would be really good for our sport. Gotcha. Now, Willie has expressed to me, because he knows of our friendship, that what baseball does not have, and I'm just going to help him out here, <laughs> is an official taste tester. Because every year teams, you know, come out with, these are the new items that are on the yeah, menu. Yeah, yeah. Like the last one we saw was like pierogies on, yeah, yeah, on a hot dog. on a hot dog. Or a rainbow cookie egg roll, right? Yeah. And I'm wondering, have you guys ever considered hiring a director of taste? You know, it's funny. We had... Um, and we did it for three or four years, an event that just focused on food in ballparks. You know, we had all the teams kind of put out of sampling of theirs. And, you know, maybe we'll do that again. We'll bring you in, send you around. I, I, like I, you know, I, 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 I will love it. I know some other good. biggies that would appreciate it. I have my own team. So it's, uh, it's got a team. Before, know, before, um, before, I, I don't want to get specific about it, but I will say, there are some things in ballparks that, like, you read what it is, yeah. and you do You're, kind of scratch like, your oh. head. <laughs> that up. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you do know weed's legal, right? <laughs> That's all that is. Before we let you go, this is obviously uh, Commissioner Rob Manfred, Major League Baseball. Uh, not a tough question, but a serious topic for a moment. Uh, Trevor Bauer, who is like you know the villain uh, for most baseball fans over the last number of years, uh, is no longer under suspension. Went overseas and played. I guess played pretty well. Right. Is playing, I believe, for a Mexican league now, and has played against some uh, minor league players and some you know, some teams uh, back uh, you know during uh, spring training, and is openly auditioning and wants to come back. There's nothing preventing a team in the moment from signing Trevor Bauer from the league office, correct? No, a a absolutely not. Look, I think we've, um, you know, I said this with other players and kind of have demonstrated our bona fides on this. You know, players serve their suspensions. They're entitled to resume their careers. Um, there is nothing 
um, either official or unofficial from our office that has been done to prevent a team from signing Trevor. And, you know, if a team wants to do it, they can do it. And final question for you. Obviously, we talked about you retiring in a few years. A lot of commissioners like to look back on their legacy, whether you want to do it yourself or your team is going to do it for you. When people say Rob Manfred, what do you want them to say about your legacy as the steward of the great game of baseball? I, I hope that people look back and say, took the game, um, made it more consonant, more relevant for today's world, um, and left it as what it's always been, the national pastime. Always appreciate your time. Thank you All right. so much, Commissioner. The best. Baseball is back. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> of course, uh, Fox has uh, the game of the week every single week all the way through the World Series. you got Dodgers and Cubs this Saturday at 3.30. And a chance, if you haven't seen Yamamoto pitch just yet, a chance to see Yamamoto pitching for the Dodgers this weekend as well. Good to have the Commissioner here. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching the Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.